everybody. Welcome to the Full Moon Fibers Knitting Podcast. I'm Jessica. I'm Allison. You can find me on Instagram as at jhenrydesignco. And I'm Allison underscore makes. And together we are at Full Moon Fibers, which mm -hmm. is our yarn company. So welcome to episode six of the Full Moon Fibers Podcast, um, where we talk about knitting, crocheting, and spinning, but mostly knitting. Uh, we just like to show off our projects and what we're working on and our different yarns and uh, yeah. Share pattern info and mm -hmm. yarn dyer info and designer info. Yeah, mm -hmm. definitely. And so we hope uh, you like what we show you today. Mm -hmm. um, so thank you to everybody who is a returning viewer. Thanks for joining us again. Um, and thank you if you are a new viewer. Thanks for watching. And if you like it, then um, please hit the subscribe button. Um, Alrighty, so one thing we like to do off the top of our episodes is just say... Hi to our Papa. Hi, yes. Papa. Hi, Papa. Um, as we are practicing social distancing, um, we still can't go to see him, but he watches the podcast. So, hi. Um, we love you, and we hope to see you soon. Yes. Uh, at the top of this episode, we just um, wanted to make a statement that we wanted to make it clear that we support Black Lives Matter and the Black Lives Matter in that, the Black Lives Matter movement. And um, we as white women recognize that we have a lot of privilege uh, we don't have to worry about day-to-day -day activities um, and that a slight action could lead to persecution from police or the people around us um, and that racism is very present in Canada and uh, we have been working um, these last few weeks on educating ourselves and listening um, and finding resources for us to learn. Um, so that we can work towards becoming anti-racist um, since it is a, a lifelong commitment. It's not just something that happens. You constantly strive towards it. Um, so that's what we're doing. Mm -hmm. We're committed to doing. Um, we have also been um, sort of muting our Instagrams so that we could offer that space up to the black community so that their voices can be heard um, and what they want to say can be heard or seen. Um, and then also allowing them to promote their businesses um, or art and, and so that they just have more room to do so um, and to find important information. Um, and we, we, we did that too by sharing it in our stories too. So mm -hmm. we did it by not posting a photo unless it was um, relevant and to Black Lives Matter. And, um, and then if, it, if we also wanted to share things, we shared it through our stories too, mm -hmm. um, to help promote and amplify black voices um, and to, yes, try to help. We have small platforms, but we still wanted to help out as, as much as we could. Yeah, because if we found resources that made us think or that we found helpful in educating ourselves, mm -hmm. um, we reposted them in hopes that so you guys might, our audiences might look at them um, and find it helpful too. Yes. So, and, and we'll list more in the box below um, too. If so, if you uh, need further references um, or other ideas, um, you can check out what we've listed and it won't be um, a complete list, but it is a good place to start mm -hmm. too. Um, so yeah, and then we just want to say that we're committed to keeping this podcast a safe space. Mm -hmm that is um, free of racism um, and so that everybody feels safe here in on our when yeah in our like little podcast community yes so yeah and in our Instagram as well yes definitely all, acro all across our social media as well as like when you if whenever you'll be able to see us again in person um, yeah, yeah hopefully at a show mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah so we just wanted to make our stance clear um because it's important for us and yeah for it's important for us for you to know yes that yeah we support black lives matter yes okay well it's been a little while since we've podcasted yeah uh we've been weeks. enjoying the sunny weather um and as you said we've been like reading and educating ourselves mm -hmm. so um, not as much knitting has been going on. No. Um, and yeah, so we're happy to be back and to get back into it. Mm -hmm. Um, we're not wearing anything today because it is kind of warm out. <laughs> so we didn't want to overheat while we were podcasting, 
But um, yeah, we can just get right back, right into um, whips. Sure. Okay, you want to go first? Okay. Okay. Um, I'll start with. Um, I'll start with. Uh, on the last episode, I asked um, if people could help me choose a color for my triangle prey shawl. So I ended up going with option B, which was the purple blur. Um, thank you to everyone who voted. That was a lot of fun watching the votes come in in the comment section. Um, and I definitely went with what the majority was. So that was really cool. Yeah. And helped me make my, my decision. Mm -hmm. And so I cast it on and I've been, for a little while I was making really good progress and then I kind of slowed down, but I'm um, picking it back up. And uh, so this is how much, oh, sorry. That's okay. This is how much I have done. <gasps> it's beautiful. And you'll see I'm almost done my um, next triangle here. Mm -hmm. I have a few more decreases to go. And yeah, so I've now used all the, all the colors mm -hmm. in different um, combos and almost all of them by themselves. Um, so I, I, cause I think my next uh, little triangle will be marble, which is um, in here with luminescent. Oh, okay. Potentially, I'd have to look at the pattern. Yeah. So, so yeah. maybe, oh, so might it be um, Tonka and Encouragement might be the stripes? I think that is the next stripe because is Tonka and Encouragement. Yeah, it hasn't happened yet. Yeah, I was looking at I was looking ahead to see which combinations are coming next, mm -hmm. and I am happy with how everything pairs for the rest of the shawl. So, nothing nothing put together that like I would consider changing or anything. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so now I just have to keep knitting. Yeah, and you're using um, Full Moon Fibers yes. um, Cosmic String Single Two Two, which is our uh, single ply base. Yes, our Canadian single ply base, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, so I'm using the. Um, so it's a purple blur here, and then I have um, encouragement as well, and luminescent, which is uh, a neon yellow, and tonka, which is like a light sandy color, mm -hmm. and marble. I have it all fitting in my J. Hendry Design Co. drawstring yarn ball. Yes. Um, so all my, I have my marble in there and then like they can all go in and my, and my shawl fits in. So it's a great size project bag for fitting everything in it for this project. Mm -hmm. and, then, and then it all fits in there. Beautiful. And got the handle on the back. So this was from Jessica's last update. Yeah. Um, and so I really liked the navy blue. So I got one of those as well. So I really like this bag. And so that's my project. Okay, what do you have? Okay, so mine's exciting because mine's a new cast on. So I just mm. have it hanging out in my uh, XL um, J. Henry Design Code drawstring with mm -hmm. the, the foam handle. So um, I saw when this um when she first started talking about this before she called for test knitters mm -hmm. i like saw her because she so um it's by anise anise sang so i'm not sure if it's anise or anise but it's um it's by anise sang and um she is i like the letter i and then her last name which is sang so s-a-n-g knits on instagram and it's the bloom your heart out shawl so it's a three color shawl um, and it has a lot of, it's a lot of feather and fan. Mm -hmm. And then it's got these really cool, I don't know if you can see it in a black and white picture, but those like, I don't know, I look, think they look like little bouquets, upside down bouquets um, with baubles and stuff. So um, I definitely think this is the most involved thing I've ever knit. Um, so far, it's not too bad because I'm just in feather and fan and I think I've got it figured out. Um, but I am, so this is my start so far. I'm on row like 110. <laughs> um, and the pattern uh, calls for 3.0 millimeter needles. So it's also the, um, I knit mine on 3.25. So it's like the most involved knit and it's also like, besides socks using sock needles for a project this is like the smallest 
yeah um needle I've ever used for a project but um so yeah so I'm really happy with it so far and I really love it uh you can see how it's like you can see the feathering fan yeah that's when it goes like kind of like a scallop mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and it, so it starts up down here and then it has an I-cord edge and then this side is garter Ooh. and then I've just been um running my um I'm using the light orange is starfish. I've just been running my starfish up inside the I-cord. Um, and you don't have any ends to weave in. Yeah, and then just making sure it's really loose with the first stitch so that it's not pulling the shawl on one side. Yeah. But yeah, so I'm loving it. It's on our um, Orbit fingering weight base, which is our um, MCN. So it's 70% merino, 20% cashmere, and 10% nylon. Yes. It's very nice and very soft. And then I'm just using, uh, I have this progress keeper from Cedar River Knits on Etsy. Very cute. It matches very nicely. Yeah, I love it so much. So my, um, I said before, this is Starfish and then this is um, Sandy Loam. And then my third color uh, will be uh, Marble. Nice. So those like little bouquets with the baubles will be made out of marble. And yeah, so it's a um, five skeins shawl mm. so far because you need uh, two, you need two of the sandy loam, two starfish, and then one marble. Very nice. So yeah, so I don't know, I'm loving it. Um, so I'm using stitch markers um, because the uh, stitch count is constantly changing. Right. So um, you'll like have a lot of them and then decrease back down and then increase back up and constantly oh, fluctuating okay. so yeah so you have to follow the chart but then also there is another um table that shows you at each row wh um, what your stitch number should be or stitch count should be oh okay that's handy yeah so it's kind of like um I have to like be make sure that I'm like sitting at a table or where I have lots of space to spread out so I can have the chart out <laughs> and then the stitch count out but um yeah I'm having a lot of fun I really like it um, I'm like a third of the way through this section. Okay. And then, um, I don't know what's coming up next. So I think I'll go into those Maybe you'll bouquets. Start, yeah, moving using marble? Mm hmm. I think so. It's also very helpful that the color is in black and white. So then when I look at the pattern and all you see is texture and you can't really tell what's coming up next. But, mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I'm really enjoying it. The yarn is super soft. I'm really happy with it. And, I'm excited to keep going. Very good. Mm -hmm. I had um, a, a happy mail day yeah. this week. I got my um, yarn from the Blue Brick from Jessica. It was a um, birthday gift. And so I got two different colorways of um, sock yarn. Mm -hmm. And I only brought one today. I brought the one that I cast it on. So I got one was um, called Iceberg. And so she... Um, this was the inspiration photo that she used. And so you get a, a like a, the size of a postcard, like um, picture to go with your yarn. I didn't know that she did that. So I got a inspiration photo with the other colorway as well. So I'll show that one when I um, cast that one on. Mm -hmm. She, um, she's a photographer and she pulls her color from um, the photographs that I guess she takes. So yes, mm -hmm. yeah, yes, Shireen, um, is the dyer. Yeah. And, and the photographer and mm -hmm. the potter and she does jewelry a lot of stuff. maker. Yes. She's very, very talented. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She's very cool. Yeah. And so she, um, well, this is one of the ones I got. Yeah. And so I caked it up so you can kind of see, um, there, and then you can kind of see the other turquoise on this side, which is a little darker. Oh, I see. Yeah. So my cake's doing funny things, but yeah, that'll be my cool. darkest color. So all I've gotten is, um, I've started my two That's cups. That's tons though, considering that you did two cups. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to start at the same time. I usually, whenever I do this, I usually will finish my pair of socks. Um, if they're casted on together. Mm -hmm. Um, if I only cast on one, then I really struggle to finish that one or finish the pair. So, so yeah, so that's what I've done. And I think, 
think I, I'm almost done this cuff and I have a little bit more to go on this one, but I went with um, the lightest for the cuff and then I'm finishing on purpose with the darkest. So then that'll be along my foot. So then the color um, of um, my socks won't hopefully change too much over time because yeah, yeah. I'm always walking on the darkest part of the yarn. Yeah, definitely. So um, I thought ahead. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, so I really like the... Um, the progression of color, um, these are like my favorite colors. So these are, these are really fun to, fun to knit with. I'm really excited to just get into stockinette. I'm very close and then I'll start motoring along. And, um, and these are, um, so I'm, I think these, yeah, oh, the you tag. have the tag. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so this is her, her logo for anyone that doesn't know. So Those her two her dogs. dogs. Yeah. And so this is on her Killarney sock face. And so she gives you a smaller skein. So you get 100 and, um, 150 yards in each skein. So you get 300 yards total. So then it's um, enough to knit your socks without a lot of leftover. Like it's a good use of the yarn. Mm -hmm. And so it's an 80-20 um, superwash nylon base. And yes, so I'm very excited about that. And I'm holding it in my little um, J. Hendry Design Co. mini drawstring yarn ball. Yes. Yeah. With the um, flowers on it. And it's holding it very nicely. It's holding both cakes. And she's yeah. a beautiful dyer. And oh, yeah. She's local to us. So, like, she's in uh, Burlington. So, it's cool to support uh, other local makers. Well, and what would be really cool, too, is when. Um, when she's able to open to the public and we're able to travel yes. more safely, then we would we could be able to go to her shop. Yeah, because sometimes that'd she has like really an cool. open studio, studio studio days where you can go in and shop. Yeah. So yeah, that'd be a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. That'll be fun. Mm -hmm. So those are my socks. Yeah, I love them. And you're next. Yeah, I'm next. So um, I kind of just revived. Um, well, last night we had a bonfire in mm -hmm. the back there, and we roasted hot dogs. Yeah, and that was great. fun. And ate a lot of marshmallows. Um, and I kind of was like, wanted to knit, so I, but I didn't want to bring out, I don't know why I thought that, but I didn't want to bring out a shawl because I was afraid the shawl would get smoky smelly. Mm -hmm. So I just brought out a pair of socks. <laughs> and I don't know why I have less disregard for my socks than I would for a shawl project. But, but anyway, so I just kind of um, revived these. So these are made with our Spring Vibes mini skein set and um, on Comet Sock. Um, I didn't get a lot done on them, but I thought I would show them off anyways. And so it's, um, there's five colors. Um, I forget what I was saying. But yeah, so um, it's a 72 stitch count sock. Um, I just did, um, heel flap and gusset with like a slip stitch heel mm -hmm. and then um oh that's what I wanted to say is that I'm doing each color is 15 rows of color of, oh okay yes. um of each color and then I switch them um and so then yeah so basically I'm trying to get this sock done so I can see how much I have left for the next sock which I know I'll have like half left but I want to be able to see if um 15 rows is a good number or if I should do like less 10. 12 or 10 mm -hmm. but I do really like how big the chunks are yes I yeah I like the thicker stripes mm -hmm. it's nice yeah the, how big the stripes are I should say yeah so yeah so um currently knitting on this blue one mm. and then this was my previous color and then there's another one mm. I think this one's my favorite one and then this green one yeah I think I like the green one the blue one and the orange one the best. Well, the green one, <laughs> I like them all. Uh, I do like this one the best. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know why, maybe because there's just lots of colors in it. But the green one is what inspired Creature, our colorway Creature. Oh, right, 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 right. And so, yeah. Um, but yeah, so I'm having lots of fun with them again. Um, I just kind of wanted to knit something small and stuck in it. So, yep, the sock check those boxes for me but I'm just keeping it in um one of my mini drawstrings um I had made some painted bags well I painted the fabric last year and then made the bags this year <laughs> and I had some scraps left over so I made myself 
a mini. I have two of these with the scraps of um, my painted bags. Nice. Because I let the big ones go. I just couldn't let the little one go. But <laughs> yeah. So super Very excited cute. to keep working on those. Uh, oh, yes. I have one more whip. Okay. I don't have any more whips. Okay. Let me get my pictures out. I don't think, what? Oh, I know what, okay, yeah, I know what it is. I don't even think I know what this is, but now oh, I you know where it is. Yeah. Here we go. Okay, so I started a pattern um, by Mara Lacole Knits, and it's called The Rose That Grew From Concrete. So there she is there, with um, a bit of her shawl there. I'll see if I can show another picture. picture. Um, oh, yeah, this one shows up. Maybe. You can fold it in half. Yeah. Oh, this one. This oh, is the one. one. This one shows basically the whole shawl. There. It's beautiful. Yeah, it's really, really pretty. And mm -hmm. it's um, it's got like a nice lace panel there that has some cables in it, I saw. And then um, some um, stockinette sections, some baubles, and then some like contrast rows with your colors and a really pretty, like a, it's not a Pico. I think it's kind of like a lace bind off because there's holes there. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, it's like a lace bind off. Yes. Um, I really, what I wanted to say is that, that sh I really like that shawl because it seems like it's really long on the top so it looks easy to wear. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, and she, um, there's a part of the pattern that she said right from the beginning of how um, I can't remember where she said it. Oh yes, there's a there's a yarn over used in the pattern mm -hmm. at some point in the pattern, and um, but the yarn over is not one of your stitches because you drop it, so then it helps to make it like a looser wingspan. She said. Oh, and, um, that's very smart. Yes, yeah, the border that's on it is really fine. I've never done. The, like the combination of stitches before to make the border mm -hmm. along the one side, I'll show you. So, um, so it's out of DK, like I said, and so you need two for your main color. So that's my main color, um, vocal fry. And you're using our um, Northern Lights DK. Mm -hmm. So it's 115 grams, um, 250 yards. And then you need two contrast colors and you just need one skein of each. So this was really originally knit. Her sample is knit with Le Bien Ami. And so I sort of um, picked my colorways based off of her um, choice of colors. Yeah, because hers was um, like a variegated, well, like a speckled um, light pink in the center where the bubbles are. Right? Yeah. And then it was white and like a golden yellow. Yes. The colorway names were... Which is the the Vienna me was mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. oh the main color is La Belle Epoque mm -hmm. Epoque Epoque French is all and then one skein of winter and then you and then yellow brick road is her um, contrast color so then instead of winter I'm using um, our color peony so it's a really nice a light pink. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, I had to do a yellow, too. So I don't have Yellow Brick Road, but I have Golden Larches by us, Bowman Fibers. So I picked that. And uh, so then... Yellow is always great as, like, a neutral, I don't know, pop. Even oh, though yeah. that's kind of... Um, well, and it's, like, kind of my favorite, favorite color right now. Yellow, which yeah. I will explain uh, yes. in the second okay. one. I'm gonna use I that feel too. like we've talked about that before. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is what I have so far. My edge is doing a weird twirl. Twirl. So that'll kind of flat. I mean, that It'll always happens in. with an edge like that too. But when I um, lay it out after I um, soak it, it'll hopefully calm itself down a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, so then, uh, so you start with the main color. You do a bobble section, um, and then you go into your contrast colors and then now I'm back in the main and um so it kind of alternates between the stockinette section and a section with um bobbles and this is the border I'm talking about it has a it's a really nice border it's very cool how 
big the stitch looks. Yes. It's almost like it resembles an I-cord, but it's like a fancy looking I-cord. Yeah, it's very fancy. Um, and it, yeah, it's like it has a raised, the one stitch here yeah, is it's, raised. It's kind of like the, it's probably not the same thing by any means, but the the raised stitches on the Sorrel sweater. The, oh, I wonder if it's made similarly. Uh, yeah. I don't oh, know. Interesting. I haven't read that pattern, but. No, that's an, um, that's another pattern I'd like to try. I will, I'd like to try the um, the shorter summer version. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so, yes. Bobbles. Yes, well, <laughs> I don't know why. Bobbles are just giving me a real hard time, um, especially the crochet bobbles. I cannot, for the life of me, make that happen. Um, I got to this section down here and then tried to do the crochet ones, totally botched it, then tried to drop my efforts and like repick up my stitches and then I totally messed that up so then I had to rip it all out which wasn't hard to do and then I restarted and then I just looked up Andrea Mowry's other um tutorial just on like a plain bobble not because Marla Cole's um pattern doesn't explain it well she does I just can't figure it out it just doesn't work every time it comes out it just doesn't work so I just went back to the simple one um, and I mean, so as a result, they're not as nice of a bobble as she has. Her bobbles are much more like a much nicer, pronounced. like rounder pronounced bobble. Yeah. yeah. Um, mine are kind of like a squished bobble, but I, 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 I think it's, it's okay. Mm -hmm. And, um, I think the pattern's so beautiful that, um, hopefully it'll help compensate for my <laughs> sad bobbles, but I'm really enjoying it so far. It's really well written. Um, um, she writes out like basically every step. So you don't have to, um, like some, sometimes, uh, pattern designers like kind of take out a chunk and just kind of refer you back to like three pages back or whatever. And so you're, you're always like flipping or, yeah, yeah. or being like, wait, what did I do there? Or, but hers is very nicely written out um, with all the instructions. So you know where you are. I'm like ticking it off as I go mm -hmm. kind of thing. And so the whole point of this pattern is, uh, well, a part of this pattern is that when you purchase the shawl, then you get a free pattern that comes along with it, which you can also purchase um, separately, I noticed. But it's the Roses from Concrete um, beanie hat and so that comes with your pattern and she wrote it because the um, shawl pattern doesn't use up all of your main color it only really kind of goes in a little bit into the second skein and you don't use up a lot of your second contrast color which is my golden arch is the yellow it uses up all of your first contrast she said so the peony I probably won't have really anything left um, but you have uh, quite a bit of the, the yellow and your main color left, your second skein. So she wrote up a quick um, beanie that you can make. And then the, it's hard to see because I printed it in black and white, but this um, like cast on edge, I think, I think it's the cast on edge, is done in the yellow. Ooh. And then so it's kind of just like a little trim. Mm -hmm. And then the rest of it is knit in your main color. So mine will be Very a combination cool. of... Um, golden larches as the little contrast um, cast on and then the hat will be um, pink that'll be nice vocal fry yeah so that was a really cool idea to include that because um, you have so much extra yarn but it like that's fine too because then you can always find another project to put that in or um, put it into a blanket or whatever mm -hmm. um, but that's really considerate to also can to also include a pattern um, to use up your leftover. Yeah, and then it's a nice like matching set mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. So I was really happy about that. I didn't realize it until I purchased it. And then I yeah. was like, why is there two patterns here? Like and if then... you were knitting this for a friend, like that would be a beautiful mm -hmm. gift of um, a shawl and a hat together. Yes. Oh, so it says here, yes, the hat is a free pattern designed to complement the shawl design and is an exclusive download for those that purchase the shawl pattern. Okay, so never mind. So I don't, I guess that means that the, sh the hat is it, not available on its own? Yeah, it might have said, she might have a listing for it on Ravelry, but then it might say available for purchase when you purchase the shawl pattern. And it, okay. it might have just been like, not, like, not like had a listing for it so you can look at the yarn requirements for it right. and stuff and information, but then it probably will say um, like this pattern is not available for purchase. Okay, yes. Hmm. But worth it. Yeah, totally. 
yeah, so now um, I'll go straight into another project. Mm -hmm. And then I've been thinking about it. I haven't completely double checked my yardage, um, but um, our next, one of our next cast ons that we really want to do is the everyday, I think it's called the Everyday Lined Hat by yes. Denise Bayron yeah. of Bayron Handmade. And so I, I love mustard yellow right now. And her, one of her samples that she wears in the pattern is in a mustard yellow yes. color from, I can't even remember what the colorway name was, but it's from Ritual Dyes. And so um, I had already put aside a full skein of this DK for that. But now I'm thinking that I might have enough left over because I'm not gonna use a lot of it, even putting it into the trim of the hat for this pattern, I might have enough to use this skein to knit the hat. I haven't double checked it. Yeah, or another thing you could do is um, is is still use the full skein in case it does. Um, but then if you wanted to make a longer brim so that you could fold it oh, over your okay. ears, you could add that to that. That's true. Because mm -hmm. I think that hat is just a single brim. Well, I think it actually... Um, the way you knit it and then you make the lining and then you fold, the brim gets folded up. Oh, so that because she said that the beauty of that hat, one of the beauties of that hat is that you will never have an um, uh, imprint on your forehead. Okay. So that must mean that the rib rises. Yeah. So then that kind of gives you a double. Already. Triple mm -hmm. with the fabric that you put mm -hmm. inside the hat too. Yeah. <laughs> so, but we, we will see. I will cast it on regardless of whether I can use the rest of this skein or I have a full skein set aside yeah. um, to do it. And then I'm thinking, I have to find it, I think I still have it, but I I'm, I think I'm gonna do a flannel lining. Oh, I was gonna put fleece in mine, I think. You're gonna do fleece? Yeah, because my, um, my colorway is kind of like a white speckled, so I figured I'd just find some white fleece, maybe, mm. or like gray or something, um, and line it with fleece. Oh, that's nice. Mm -hmm. I think I have like a cream and black plaid flannel and I um, thought that would look really good inside mm -hmm, of mm -hmm. a yellow hat but I have to look in my fabric that would stash, look good. right yeah so that's what I'm thinking I'm gonna do for that mm -hmm. and then it'll be a nice like fall winter hat yeah and yeah so that's my next plan so yes yeah, so I might have the hat casted on if I'm gonna need too much yardage I'll have the hat casted on next with the fresh skein and if it's not too much, and I think I can do it with this one, then the hat will happen as soon as I have this project done. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so, oh, and and she just got a book deal. Yeah, with Lina, 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 Lane, Lina. How we say that? Yeah, so that's cool. Really exciting. So yeah. that's coming out next year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really cool because. Um, and that hat pattern is top down, which I've never done a top down hat before. I have not either. Um, so, yeah, which is also awesome because in that sort of situation, you can knit until you run out because. Oh, true. Um, it it's like doing a toe up sock. Like you've yeah. got the important part over with. Yeah, you don't have to worry more. more you don't have to worry about your yardage that mm -hmm. way. Mm -hmm. And then I guess maybe if you did knit it longer, would you just make the. Um, insert a little bit longer then? Well, the thing that I, the only thing I would make longer would be the ribbing. Uh, which would then just fold up anyways. Yeah, so I might, like, if I were to do that, mm -hmm. I would maybe, it would be cool to mm, do, like, a, do, um, I'm trying to think, but do a double brim and then fold it on, maybe, like, tuck it under and sew it. And then when you flip it up, then you'll have... You can either wear it with, like, just a sewn down, oh, yes, two layer sewn down brim, or when you tuck it up, then you'd have, like, four layers because oh, you wow. have the lining, the hat, and then the two layers of ribbing. But I wonder if you'd still hear wearing <laughs> that hat. Your ears would be so warm, and yeah. the, but you might not even hear anyone <laughs> muffled. <laughs> yes. So that is my. Um, um, the roses that grew from concrete, mm -hmm. and then it will be. The Roses from Concrete um, Beanie, which yeah. I will knit after. Um, so I'm really excited about this pattern. I think it's really beautiful. She has a lot of beautiful shawls and, uh, and other designs too. Mm -hmm. And a beautiful Instagram yeah. as well. 
I'm going to knit, I took yarn home this week to knit yeah. the, um, it's, I think it's, I think it's when the rainbow is enough. Yes, I think that's the one you got. Yeah, and it's e, uh, enough is spelled E-N, E-N-U-F. Yes. Um, and so it's like brioche and then, um, with a two color brioche and then a big lace panel on the end. Oh, and you so, do love brioche. I do love brioche. And I'm mm, super nice. excited for that. I think I might cast that on today after podcasting. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> that might be too many projects. Oh, well, you can never have too many projects. No. All right, so we don't have any. Should I do this one first? Oh, no, we each have one. Yeah, okay. so now we both this? have this? Uh, FOs. Yeah. Um, the whips are done. Maybe mm -hmm. save this, do these. Yeah, let's do our different okay, ones you first do before first. I do our similar ones. So um, it's not blocked yet, but I'm very excited to talk about it. So I'm going to talk about it anyways. Then maybe next week I'll wear it. Mm -hmm. um, so I finished my Kalia wrap by Tammy Gore Designs. So I'm very excited. So there's. So last time we podcast, I had was just here at the pink. Um, so I did all of this. And then it ends, the stockinet section is a little curled, but with some blocking, then it'll lay down flat. So it ends with this point. And then it's very cool because you just maintain this spine all the way up. Um, and so it's knit with our Greatest Hits Volume 1 um, 10 skein mini skein set. And then I used, um, in the original pattern, she uses uh, mohair, but it's not the full skein of mohair. So instead I used um, Surrey since, um, our Surrey, because our Surrey is 328. And then I forget what the required, I think it was like 230 yards of mohair for the pattern. So I was like, oh, I can totally do it. And um, now it's nice now and it's soft. it's super soft um, and it's in our colorway personal bubble with a bit of a popped stitch from weaving it ends. But, um, but yeah, so I'm super excited to wear it and to show it off. It was a lot of fun to knit. Um, and yeah, I definitely will be knitting more of her things in the future. Yeah, she just, she also just, just released just a pattern. It. Yeah. Uh, I think it's called Drift Lines. I bought it. I'm excited. And it's in like sport. Yeah. And it has, as she said, it has a lot of different techniques in it, right? Yeah, which is like... Everything but the kitchen sink, is that what she said? She might have. I think so, yeah. With In regards to how many different things you're going to do throughout the shawl. Mm -hmm. like that was, was a... A lot. Well, I was just going to say like brioche, but then I couldn't remember a lot of the other ones. Yeah, ones there's like said. color work, slip stitching, and I think oh, there's true. some lace. And then I also think that part of it is intarsia. Yeah, I was kind of wondering a little bit of a part kind of near the middle in the mm -hmm. picture. I was like, now how would you do that? Yeah, so I kind of wonder if it's in Tarja. So it's kind of a good, if you are a, like, advanced beginner and you might be looking for something to advance your skills with. Yeah, that would teach you a lot of different techniques mm -hmm. at once. In, a, in small chunks. Yep. So, like, that's cool. Um, and then she said, I think she said it can be scrappy. I think so. But it's, yeah. um, I think it's three, I think she used three colors. Yeah. And it's, um, I don't know if it's a half crescent or if it's just a circular shawl. I, I'm not sure. But anyways. Yeah. I don't know what that's I called. I think it's going to be really be cool. That's another. Crescent. Yeah. Yeah. I forget what it's called. The other elongated circle. Mm -hmm. Um, that was another shawl that I saw her, she posted about. Either it's in her feed, back book, in her feed, or it was like in an eye story. I think I remember the post where she just showed the yarn she was going to use. Oh, maybe. And, and I, I was like, like, what is she going to do with yeah, that? Yeah, I saw like hints of it. Mm -hmm. Everybody's dropping these hints and it's making me, because it gives you something to look forward to is what I'm trying to say, that these designers are sort of dropping these hints mm -hmm. and they've all been beautiful. Um, and then that kind of, they'll be uh, like, oh, like coming soon, like release on such and such date. And it's kind of, it's almost like waiting for a movie to come out. Yeah. Even though you can't go to the movies. That's my analogy is the, yeah. Show. Yes. This like, gives us something else that we can look forward to. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and yes, because it's something that they've all been working on for a while, but maybe weren't, um, showing it off or maybe they had planned on releasing it at a different time. Mm -hmm. You never know. And then now they start to like show the hints and yeah and then they finally it comes out yeah and yeah 
I always get most excited and then slightly disappointed, but it's like a silly disappointed when they show a picture and then, but it's only the test knitter call. So then I'm like, okay, I gotta just wait a little bit longer. Cause yeah. I'm like, oh my God, does that mean it's month. out? And then it'll be out in a month. Yeah, and then it's like, okay, please, test knitters, like go as fast as you can. <laughs> and then, and then we can have the post where it's like, okay, it's out. Yeah, it's been yeah. released. Um, but yeah, but it was really fun to knit. It went super quick. Um, it's kind of great because it's, um, so what's nice about this one is that you maintain the same stitch count after every row. Mm -hmm. So it would be good for um, an advanced beginner. And you do lots of different textures. And yeah, it's nice and flowy. Mm -hmm. You knit it on four millimeter needles. So it's got really nice drape. And it's got a lot of stock in net, which also makes it drapey. But yeah, so very nice. Yeah, I'm going to block it up this week and um, hopefully be able to wear it next week. Yeah, see how much it grows. Mm -hmm. And then I was thinking, because I have all these little um, chunks left over, that what I might do is make three tassels. So put like one here, one here, and then one on this end. That would be fun. Um, with my scrappy leftovers. Yeah, yeah. Because basically that's how you would wrap it around yourself anyway. So then you'd have like two tassels on one side and one tassel on the other side. Mm -hmm. So that'd be fun. I might do that. Hmm. Well, and you know how to do tassels now because of your... Yeah. Is it the So Soon Knits pattern? Yeah, the U-Rock shawl. Yes. Um, yeah, but I'm definitely not going to make them as chunky. As chunky. <laughs> <laughs> like paperweights. <laughs> Um, so my FO is my Ache Cowl by Hilary Smith Callis. So it's, oh, this way. There we go. Uh, so it was using our Out of This World mini skein set on single ply. Mm -hmm. And there was five colors. Um, and you used a skein of mohair. And a skein of mohair, yes. Um, sterling, Sorry. a light gray. So this was the first um, mini skein mm -hmm. um, with the mohair on top of it. And you sort of faded the set. Nope, this is the second. <laughs> this is the second one, yes. I tried to fade it a little bit. This is my favorite here with the pinks and oranges. Mm -hmm. And then two greens. So the first one was a green with um, more purples. And then the second one was a green with more yellows and oranges. And then I sewed it up. I washed it and laid it out to dry. And it's a wonderful size. Yeah. And it's nice it's and soft with the mohair. And I will definitely wear it when in the fall. Yeah, when it gets cold again. <laughs> yeah. And it'll be a great um, booth sample. And it'll look good. We were just talking about wearing jean jackets today on the drive <gasps> yeah. over here. It'll this look great with your jean jacket. jean jacket. Mm -hmm. Yep, that would be very nice. Yeah, so this is a nice, like, easy knit. This would be a good, um, like, gift knit, too. Yeah. If you're thinking about gift knitting. Um, you don't need to use five mini skeins. You can use, you'd be able to use a full skein of yarn yeah. or just scraps. And mm -hmm. If you have a special skein you're holding on to or even yeah. a, a gradient. Um, yeah. Yeah, that would be really pretty. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's another pattern. Yeah. Off the needles. Mm -hmm. So then our next thing, I feel like that's why I feel like I can like cast three things on is because I finished two things. Well, yeah, I finished that. But, like, the one thing doesn't really count because I also, like, started and finished it, like, two weeks ago. Well, no, you still have to. You have to count it. You, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because it's not technically clearing off a pair, any, an old project. but Nah, whatever. Okay. So, mine, I didn't weave in the ends. No. But this is a, this is um, a, we announced it on Instagram a couple mm -hmm. of weeks ago that we were excited to be participating in our first um, collaboration with a knitwear designer and so we collaborated with Boho Knits Kelly McClure on her next pattern the fog eater hat and so we were um, test knitters and we actually got to um, con contribute our yarn towards the um, pattern mm -hmm. so that was really cool and she's she's been doing a whole series um, for the year that she announced last year of working with local hand dyers in Ontario and she would use their yarn and publish a new pattern each time throughout the year and so then this pattern was um, 
kind of a, just an extra pattern that she was doing. And then it um, turned out that we got to um, be the, 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 the yarn part <laughs> yeah. of the collaboration. So that was really cool. So we, we, um, we just finished our hats and we're going to be putting some kits together and she, Kelly's going to be announcing, um, the release of the pattern. I think it's within the next few days or so. Um, basically I think she has all her feedback now. And so she's just, um, putting the pattern together and pictures and stuff like that. So it's in the final stages. And so these are our hats. Yeah. So yeah, mine don't have the ends woven in, but mine don't. Why is yours so much taller than mine? I'm not sure. Huh. Oh no, it doesn't look that much. Oh, because you did extra rows. No, I didn't. Oh, you didn't. Oh, never mind. <laughs> um, have you put yours on your head? Yes. Oh. Yeah, here I'll put it up. That's my hat. <gasps> it's very cute. Something like that. So you Hats can. Look so it has like um a folded up brim. Yeah. Except the different part is that it's um the reverse stockinette that's showing mm -hmm. um and then the idea is is that you can make it even warmer by folding up that brim one Again. more time so i can show you that with mine i haven't so tried. yeah it's like super cozy and it's like a little like cap um <laughs> i don't think i would oh well uh... <laughs> It looks good on you. I think mine, because mine has an extra inch on it. Oh, I did with the patterns that I would wear. Yours is like still cute, anyways. though. So, yeah, them. so mine's like this. Um, I used um, Creature on Nebula and uh, Green Space on Moon Dust Surrey. Yeah. And I really like the combination. Um, and then, so then when it's, mine's a little bit slouchier. Yeah, yours looks nice on you. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you. I always have it's trouble with much... hats and whether or not they. I think they look okay on my head. Anyway. It looks great. I think it looks good. Oh, thank you. I am considering a pom-pom. Mm, I am not considering a pom-pom. No, I don't think yours needs a pom-pom, but I think mine does. I have a white pom-pom, so I might be putting that on. This is very much giving me vibes of, like, snowboarder days. I know. And with your hair? snowboard all the time. Uh, Yeah. Yeah, with my faded hair. Yeah. Um, oh, and mine is say, um, I can't remember now. Heirloom Rose mm -hmm. on our Moon Dust Surrey base. And then I did Peony on our Asteroid Sock base. So then that kind of gave me a like a marled. Yeah, marled it's beautiful. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. very expensive. Oh, thank you. Um, well, it's nice and soft. I was going to say something. It is very soft. Oh, so it's knit on a three and a half millimeter needle. Yep. Um, it's a lot of stockinette. So if you're looking for an easy uh, TV project. Yes, and it's um, our, a very nice gift knit too. Mm -hmm, very mm -hmm. quick. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Because I was thinking, and it comes in um, children to adult sizes. Mm -hmm. um, we were thinking of knitting some small, smaller versions. Yeah. Some ch child versions for our booth and stuff. And then, um, yeah, I'm looking for, I probably, I think this might be a, pattern that I would um gift knit yeah or um also like yes gift mm -hmm. knits. and I had no trouble with um so with yarn because I still have an, I don't mm. know how much grams this is but no I'll have to wait yeah we both have pretty good chunks left over and then this is how much um I think this is probably like 30 30 or 40 oh grams. definitely yeah and there's still a good weight to my creature um, and yeah, it was a lot of fun. And when it was going, it had a, a slow start and then I got very frustrated because I wasn't using a type of needle that I like. Oh yeah. And it was killing my hands. And then, um, True North, I noticed I've been creeping their website like once a week because <laughs> there's multiple pairs of needles that I want, but with the pandemic, everything's kind of backlogged. Mm -hmm. So I noticed that they finally got in some 16 inch, three and a half millimeter chow goos. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I need to get those. Which is what I was working on. So mm -hmm. I was going back a bit faster because I was using comfortable needles. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, mine was taking forever because I was using the high highs and I just find that the needle is not long enough. And then it really makes me like tense up and it's a lot harder to knit. And mm -hmm. I feel like I get carpal tunnel from it. But, um, yeah, so they gave, they, we also got like 
next day delivery or same day delivery just same because day. we happen to order on the day that they deliver in in Barrie where we live um but yeah so they were delivered and then we got home and I like ripped into it and I was like these are mine <laughs> um but yeah so this is uh what creature and green space look like together and then there's the reverse duck net section mm -hmm. and it's more neon green because it's um the color is changing on the screen mm -hmm. it's a more neon green yeah it's like a light neon and so we're going to put together um, different kits mm -hmm. and options with using um, both mohair or, and surrey, depending yeah. on which base you prefer, Yeah. Um, with our asteroid sock base. And so we'll have those for sale as soon as, or a little bit after the um, pattern gets released. Mm -hmm. And um, an important thing we'd like to mention too is that uh, Kelly is going to be um, putting the pattern for $1 for sale on Ravelry. And all the proceeds will be going towards Black Lives Matter. Um, indefinitely like forever yeah and then we're going to do with our kits uh every time we have them stocked and we would hope to keep them stocked mm -hmm. um in our um store and if we go to a show or a trunk show then we're going to do um 20 percent of each sale will go to black lives matter as well yeah from ours mm -hmm. and in 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 the future we are going to be looking for more places um and more ways to um to, yes, and to to contribute and um, create donations um, and things like that and using support. our yarn, yeah, um, store mm -hmm. and and Jay Hendry and Jay Hendry, yes, yeah, yeah. So yeah, so we're very excited about that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's all come together. Um, I was afraid I wouldn't get it done. The, I know. Well, I never. Uh, well, yeah, the deadline was Friday, and I think I finished casting off on Thursday. I mean, it's still technically not done because I didn't weave in the ends, but I. Seem to have misplaced the notion, my notion space. It has all my darning needles in it, so oh, I gotta yeah. find that before I can weave them in. But yeah, yeah. Oh, mine's all done. Mm -hmm. It's ready for a uh, soak. Yep, mine's gonna get a bath this week with yeah. my. I have a few things. I have um, some hats, my hats and mitts from the winter. I want to get them washed up so that they're clean before I put them away for storage. And then yes, I have to do that too. Um, so I'm just gonna do like a a big load of soak stuff. Um, this week and then have a bunch of stuff dried and ready to go very nice mm -hmm. so that's all of our um knitting yes and we will be sure to post the information that comes um like when the pattern's released things like that we would encourage you to follow um boho knits on instagram as well if you don't already mm -hmm. um she has a lot of beautiful patterns a yeah. lot of her patterns she offers for free as well yeah um so there's lots of different things to find there yeah, she's uh you you'll know her from she's the published or the designer behind um the sockhead hat, mm -hmm. which is like one of the most popular downloads. And it's a free free data mm -hmm. free <laughs> download on Ravelry and yes. um yeah, it's like a one skein beanie that's slouchy and yeah. Yeah, for using those one of a kind um sock yarns you have in your stash that you're not quite sure what to do with. But you love it. But you love it. Mm -hmm. It it um gets worked up nicely into a nice um hat pattern yeah from her and so we'll keep all that information going and one of our other things we've been working on is um we're switching over to a new website yes so we'll have that organized soon mm -hmm. and up and running in the next couple weeks mm -hmm. and um so then we'll start um Everything will be way more organized yeah and easy to find on this website it's a really good um like um platform to use and so um we'll have that all organized and mm -hmm. we'll keep you in posted on that and um we're switching from uh weebly to shopify mm -hmm. and the we just found that weebly is a little bit difficult to manage our catalog um between both businesses because yeah. we want to keep both businesses together on the same website so that you don't have to pay for shipping twice or we don't have to worry about refunding anybody if they wanted to buy from web, one website or the other or one business or the other so um yeah it's just the layout it just offered a better layout that allows it to be more organized yes and so hopefully that'll make a difference and the big thing too is is that we'll now be able to offer paypal so yeah. um i can't figure out haven't been able to figure out yet um to get a convert currency converter button on the website but at least if you check out with paypal paypal will tell you how much it is in american dollars or whatever yeah. currency that you're checking out with mm -hmm. and then yeah and then with this new website we're hoping to open up for um international orders as well mm -hmm. um once 
yeah, so we'll, we just have to look at if any countries still have um, shipping restri restrictions on them. But yeah, I think it's uh, more companies are uh, more country countries are opening up, mm -hmm. so that's good. Yeah, and um, our next shop update will be coming soon, mm -hmm. most likely once we have the new website up and running. Yeah, we so, want to try and get the website up and running mm -hmm. and then start adding new stuff to it. So yeah, because like we mentioned earlier, um, our that Jessica's knitting her biho shawl. Um, with the Orbit um, sock, mm -hmm. the MCN, that's not listed in our shop yet. So that will be a part of, that's one of our new um, Canadian bases that we've gotten in. And so we'll be listing that um, in our next update, which will be on our new website. Yeah. So um, we'll keep you posted. Either like watch for on Instagram if you're interested in purchasing anything from us. Or um, maybe by the time we do our next podcast episode, then we'll um, be able to announce a date. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So that's what's been happening. Yeah. And Exciting stuff in the background. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you for watching for and for joining us. Um, we hope you enjoyed this episode. And we hope to see you soon. Yes. Thank you for returning after we've taken a bit of a break. Mm -hmm. We think we're back on a more of a set schedule now. Yeah. So we hope that you are healthy and well and that you have a good week. And we will see you soon. Yeah. Bye. Bye.